What's going on guys? Sam Adams here and today we're going to be talking about Twitch.tv and if you're new to the channel or you don't know my personal life or what I do, uh, I listen to a lot of podcasts, whether it be at the gym, whether it be driving to school, whether it be at school itself in a boring class, I listen to a ton of podcasts and one of those happens to be Painkiller Already. And uh, this past week there was an episode with Boogie2988 who is a pretty popular streamer on Twitch.tv and they were talking about the idea of Twitch.tv actually branching out and allowing users to stream content other than gaming and I felt fairly strongly on the subject so I thought that I would go ahead and make a video on it because uh, a lot of people have been posing this idea for a good long while and I wanted to kind of give my opinion on why twitch.tv needs to stay exactly where it is. So first off a little bit about twitch.tv itself. It started off as justin.tv in 2007 which was founded by Justin Khan and Emmett Shear and uh, it was really popularized by Justin himself who live streamed his entire life 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year for anyone on the site to watch and then as more people began live streaming the site was originally divided into categories and there was a pretty significant rise in those that were watching in the gaming category. Eventually the gaming category began growing very fast and a lot of people were watching under the gaming category, in fact more than any other category on the entire site of Justin.tv, which kind of brought forth the idea, why don't we just go ahead and make this its own thing, which is where Twitch.tv originally came from. And so in 2011 it became its own thing and they both coexisted alongside each other, Justin.tv and Twitch.tv for a couple of years until 2014 whenever Justin.tv was shut down and the entirety of the effort was put forth towards Twitch.tv itself. So now it's a subsidiary company of Amazon.com, which pretty much means that Amazon paid a lot of money to make a lot of money off Twitch.tv in the long run and to own that incredible asset, which means that Twitch.tv is doing very well. And uh, now it's a go-to platform for people to talk about video games, for people to share their gameplay, for industry professionals to show off their new games and their game development. It's just an awesome platform for doing awesome things that have to do with gaming. Which brings us to the conversation at hand. Why doesn't Twitch.tv branch out and try other kinds? kinds of live streaming, including cooking, you know, doing yard work, uh, making a bed, doing everyday activities. Why don't they branch out and allow users to live stream whatever they want? And some people say that they've already been kind of experimenting with that through the creative category, the game development category, the gaming talk show category, and the music category. And to that I say, no, that's not exactly what's happening. Those categories are used for other things that do have to do with gaming. And then I'm going to kind of defend why they definitely shouldn't try branching out because that would kill Twitch and entirely. So under the creative category, you're going to be finding artists creating content that for the most part has to do with games, but otherwise is a group of people showing off a skill that they're adept in, much like the gamers are showing off their gaming skill whenever they're showing their gameplay on their own Twitch channel. And uh, whenever I say they're sculpting stuff and painting things that have to do with gaming, I literally mean I saw a guy the other day sculpting a sculpt of Kratos from God of War, and it was absolutely incredible. So there you have it. That one already has to do with gaming just because it's people showing off a skill that they have outside of a game, but still kind of incorporating it with their love for gaming, and that's a beautiful section of Twitch. Next up, we have the game development category of Twitch.tv, which is literally where you see the gaming industry from the perspective of the developer himself or herself, and that's an incredible thing, and it's an incredible tool for those that are looking to get into the game development side of the gaming industry, uh, because I've recently been watching a guy develop a little game called Manifold Garden that's going to be coming out in the next couple of years, maybe a month or so. I'm not really sure what the timeline is for the release of the game, but kind of think about Echochrome. If you remember that PSP game, I believe it came out on PS3 as well. Not really sure about that, but it's a beautiful geometric masterpiece of a game, and he releases wallpapers from the game development section every single day, but every day around 2 o'clock, he goes and shows off him developing the game, and this is not only incredible for people like me that are going to play the game and can kind of see where he is building the game and what the game is going to look like, but he's also able to show off what the kind of of job he has is like. People that are looking to get into game development can watch this guy develop this game and kind of say, you know, that looks incredible, that looks like something I would love to spend years working on, or they might very well say, that's not what I thought it'd be like. I thought I was going to be playing video games all day. I don't want in on that. And that's going to propel the industry forward in the long run because it's going to separate those that are passionate about what they're getting into from those that are just wanting to play video games all day. And that's a great tool for the industry to have in the long run. Now next up you have the gaming talk show, which is actually my favorite section of Twitch.tv because of the, the kind of things that you can put up underneath gaming talk show. 
And uh, by that I mean that there is pretty much a high production value and a low production value. And with the high production value you have professional gaming talk shows that are actually created by people in the industry themselves and uh, by internet personalities or people that might have been on TV talking about video games previously. And uh, the two shows that come to mind are The Attack and Colin and Greg Live. And so The Attack is pretty much uh, the um, continuation of Attack of the Show, which is a... Uh, show that used to be on G4 TV, which was TV for gamers back in the day, and pretty much it was hosted by Kevin Pereira and Olivia Munn, who was a Playboy model, uh, just as a side note, and uh, they would pretty much talk about everything from video games to technology to internet memes to the viral videos that were going around YouTube that day. They talked about all of that stuff, and that's pretty much what the attack is on Twitch.tv right now, and it's always a fun thing to watch. Now, alongside that, you have Colin and Greg Live, which comes on every day at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, I believe and it's pretty much where Colin Moriarty and Greg Miller from Kinda Funny Games come on and they talk about all the video game news that's coming out of the industry for that particular day and then they talk to the community and it's a great way for the community to stay connected to the people making the content and that is a beautiful thing and that's definitely one way that people can use the uh, gaming talk show side of Twitch. Now there's also the low production value and this is kind of where Boogie2988 comes in. He was on that uh, episode of PKA that I kind of introduced at the beginning of this video and uh, he comes comes on twitch.tv late at night in my time zone and he'll sometimes play a game but for the most part he hangs out in gaming talk shows and he just talks about video games with the people that are in the chat and it can be anything from what new games are coming out some video game news that hit earlier in the day what he thinks about a certain older franchise it's pretty much just where nerds can come and be nerds and although it is considered a lower production value in my mind it has the exact same value as the higher production value stuff because at the end of the day we're all passionate people talking about a passion that we all have simultaneously and alongside each other and it's a beautiful thing whenever people have a place to come and discuss what they're passionate about online and that's exactly what gaming talk shows is for me at least on twitch.tv now last but not least the category that I feel like I have to defend is music now this one is pretty much defends itself if you go on the music category right now there obviously are not going to be that many people live streaming uh, in the music category but what you do find is going to be pretty impressive normally I see a guy playing a piano that's playing pieces from video games he's literally playing video game soundtracks on his piano and obviously there are people that play guitars there are people that sometimes have bands on there and that's definitely one way that you can use the music section of twitch.tv now the other side of it is a tool for other streamers to use one channel that comes to mind that I'm actually subscribed to or following I suppose is monster cat which is pretty much where VOD safe music is streamed 24 7 and what that means is that the video on demand uh, section of Twitch is pretty much where a live stream takes place and then Twitch saves a VOD of it a video that you can watch whenever you want pretty much a YouTube video of it that can actually be exported to YouTube now if you stream copyrighted music that entire video is muted which is very unfortunate if something funny happens uh, with channels like monster cat and there are tons of them out there you can stream whatever music is playing on that um, on that Twitch stream for free entirely uh, throughout your live stream and you're not going to get copyright flagged for it. So not only is the music section of Twitch a tool for gamers to use, which is obviously a very useful tool, but it's also an outlet for those that might be musically inclined and also have a passion for video games to combine those two passions and share it with the world and create a following and a fan base. And that's an awesome place to be on Twitch.tv. Now some people are going to say, well, they've been streaming Bob Ross on Twitch lately. How can you defend Bob Ross on a site that has to do with games? Gaming. And I can say gaming isn't necessarily exactly what Twitch is about, though it is a big part of it. Twitch.tv is for a condensed audience as compared to that of YouTube or Google. Now, if you go on YouTube or Google, this is pretty much open to everyone. And a lot of people I know that don't necessarily know a lot about technology know a lot about YouTube in the same way that someone that's subscribed to Netflix might not necessarily be technologically fluent. With Twitch.tv, these are people that know their internet. These are gamers that spend a lot of time playing games and want to know more about the games they play, so they probably spend a lot of time on Reddit, for instance. They spend a lot of time on the internet reading articles. Pretty much, these are the people that are fluent in the internet culture and the internet language and the internet lingo and their memes and whatnot, and those people know that Bob Ross is a significant figure online because of his funny sayings, because he's straight out of uh, like the late 80s kind of time period where everything is just kind of... Uh, 
you know, held up and praised on the internet. He is pretty much a personification of a little section of the internet. And so considering Twitch.tv has this kind of user base, it fits perfectly, which is why he's stuck around so long instead of being a small temporary little thing that they did back at the end of 2014. So now that I've kind of defended all of the uh, not gaming categories, let's go ahead and hypothetically say that Twitch.tv opened its doors to anything to be live streamed on its service, whether it be making coffee, whether it be mowing the lawn, whether it be making a bed or a sandwich, whatever it is, let's just say you could live stream it. What exactly would happen? And to that I say, take a look at YouTube. For instance, there are some creators that make some high quality content on YouTube. Uh, obviously you have your standards like Epic Mealtime, etc. But then you have some guys like Freddie Wong and then you have Red and Link. And these are the two examples that I'm going to use. Uh, Freddie Wong creates these little short films that are between five and 10, sometimes 15 minutes long, but they're very high production value. They're very costly things, but they do get millions of views and people consistently love everything that he puts out. And uh, these come out probably, I would say once a week or so. He has an entire regiment, a, um, you know, an upload schedule that he abides by. And I'm not going to get into that because quite frankly, I don't know what his upload schedule is, uh, but he does make some incredible content. And similarly, you have Rhett and Link who are the host of Good Mythical Morning, which is pretty much Good Morning America, but injected with internet memes and funny videos and just incredible little games to play and stuff. And Rhett and Link have an entire team of people creating content for each individual show, making uh, you know scripts, writing jokes, etc. They have professional lighting, professional quality mics. These guys know what they're doing and they know how to make a morning show. And that's pretty much the high production value side of YouTube. And then there's the low production side of things where you have two 10 year olds, let's just say, and they're both outside. Uh, they have a three inch ramp that they made out of a piece of plywood and he goes, dude, I'm gonna, I'm gonna film you over there jumping that thing. And then he takes out his phone and he holds it vertically and he goes, all right. And he's recording at this point, ready, set, go. And then he like starts shaking like this and then the phone's moving. He's like, yeah, 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 whoa. And then he like falls down, you know, like that kind of thing gets uploaded to YouTube at the same time. And there is a ton of content that is of that quality out there alongside the high quality stuff. And so it kind of dilutes uh, YouTube itself. So instead of it being consistently high quality content that people love to watch, you also get a couple of turds mixed in here and there, which kind of it gives YouTube a reputation of, yeah, you can find some awesome things on here. A lot of awesome people make incredible content, but there's also the, the trashy kind kind of junk side of YouTube that is also very able to be found. Ultimately, I think Twitch knows that's exactly what would happen and they want to keep the quality of the content high, which is obviously a great choice whenever it comes to having any kind of service where you're trying to entertain people. Because although the user base for Twitch is very devoted and although those people would stick around and come and watch their favorite streamers on a nightly or weekly basis whenever the streamer's streaming, uh, they wouldn't explore as much because of all of the crap content that would be on the service. And I know I don't want that. I know you guys want some awesome content on Twitch and I know Twitch wants to maintain the reputation that they've already built up of having incredible content and I think that's exactly what they're going to do going forward and I support that. So there you guys have it. That's just my two cents on the subject. If you did enjoy the video, please drop me a like down below and leave your opinion of what you think about Twitch.tv. Should they branch out and try other things? Would that ruin the service? Or do you think that that's actually the future of where Twitch is going? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And if you are new to the channel, first off, I want to give a warm welcome to you. Welcome to the channel, man. Good to see you here. And of course, click that subscribe button if you have never seen any of my other content. I do upload new stuff like three or four days a week, depending on the week. And as always, I want to thank each and every one of you guys for watching this particular video. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.